This is CNC World, a new perspective. Eyes are on China's newly established pilot free trade zone in the country's economic hub of Shanghai after its official launch in late September. The new zone is a test field of a series of reform policies by the Chinese government to ease restrictions on businesses and investments. Nikki Aaron has more. It's being hailed as potentially the boldest reform in China in decades. After being announced by the Chinese government earlier this year, the Shanghai Free Trade Zone officially opened at the end of September. For many businesses and investors both inside and outside of China, the new zone has all the potential of a dream come true with promises of the loosening of restrictions on foreign investment and granting banks and other businesses more freedom to experiment. The cabinet has also suggested that it will be used as a testing ground for financial reforms, which will include interest rate deregulation, a convertible exchange rate and an elimination of financial restrictions for foreign companies. The launch of the zone has seen a rush of eager businesses looking for a way to make the new policies work for them. It's an influx that may not be visible to the outside yet, but for business consultant Xu Liu Wei, his job just got busier. So much so that just two weeks since the launch of the new zone, he's already planning on expanding his team and moving into a bigger office. I'm currently receiving more than two or three hundred phone calls every day. Sometimes I have phones in both hands. I often work until 11 p.m. Xu Liao Wei's company is one of the first batch of agents granted a license to help new firms handle registrations in the zone. His clients come from a range of industries, from the financial sector to the entertainment industry, all with one thing in common. They want to gain a foothold in the Chinese market and become one of the first stream of companies to benefit from the new policies the free trade zone promises. Unsurprisingly, the new trade zone has not escaped comparison to the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone, which led to a number of much-needed reforms and industrial growth throughout China in the 1980s. Some are wondering whether the Shanghai Free Trade Area could be the start of China's third wave of economic reforms. The first two being Deng Xiaoping's policies in the late 70s and 80s, and China's 2001 entry into the World Trade Organization. Uh, we look at, for instance, um, uh, relaxation of the foreign exchange control policies. We're also looking at uh, ease of establishment uh, to allow companies, uh, foreign or domestic, to come to the zone, set up companies uh, uh, at, at a much easier, uh, uh, much easier to set up those businesses. We we'll also look at, for instance, there are businesses which historically was very much controlled and regulated, um, and with the free trade zone, uh, they will be given much more freedom to operate. So. So we are obviously very, very excited, and so are our clients. The biggest hope is that the launch of the new free trade zone will kickstart China's long-anticipated transformation of the Chinese economy. But now, the change is being very rapid. 60% of Shanghai's economy is now service-based. But how to take that forward to the next level, the free trade zone, has freed up restrictions in very critical areas such as education, such as health care and uh, other areas which um, uh, foreigners had been restricted from participating in previously. The Shanghai Free Trade Zone is therefore a trial ground for future reforms, which, like the Shenzhen Free Trade Zone, could eventually spread across the rest of the country. A transition from a manufacturing centre into a service centre is considered by many to be the natural next stage of development for China. 
It's a step which would not only vastly tackle China's worrisome pollution levels, but also lead the country a longer path towards producing a much higher quality of goods and services as well as steer it away from a dependence on exports and lead it towards becoming a more healthy economy overall. Uh, in addition, it's just a normal next stage of economic development uh, of a country. Uh, as the economy matures, they, they go up the product and service chain uh, and produce more higher end uh, goods and services and they become less dependent upon exports, uh, a more uh, balanced, mature uh, economy. As China opens its arms to more service-oriented companies from entertainment venues, legal services, education and healthcare, one might suppose that joint venture companies already established in China would be wary of the potential competition. On the contrary, most insiders are eager for the arrival of new reforms and are keen to see the next stage of development push quality levels to new highs. However, not everyone is that optimistic. Some have called the free trade zone overly hyped, while some were disappointed that the scheme did not include several hoped-for reforms, such as cuts in corporate tax and permission for foreign auctioneers to sell antiquities. For the time being, many businesses and investors remain on standby until more detailed policies are released. I think you know, currently we're still waiting. Uh, we're waiting for the detailed policies to come out. Uh, some of our clients uh, are actually more anxious than us. Um, they always press us and wanted to know what's new, what's coming out. Uh, as an advisor, we obviously tell them uh, what has been announced, what are likely the, 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 the policies, but, but more importantly, we we'll work with our clients to come up with strategies and way to deal with uh, transactions. This area covering 11 square miles is the trial zone for China's next step towards a more open future. It's here in Shanghai's Pudong district where the country has launched a new free trade zone which is hoped could lead to an upgrade in the country's economic model by promoting trade and encouraging more foreign investments. But one of the most exciting prospects of this development is that it could lead to a streamlining in government functions. Since taking office in March, China's new leadership has emphasised the streamlining of government functions. These moves, including the approval of the zone, reflect its ambition to take the initiative in pursuing comprehensive economic structural transformation by creating administrative procedures that have the ability to create the changes that the country needs. I've never before seen such a significant and revolutionary administrative form, reform than that which is represented by this free trade zone. I was astounded. It turns everything on its head that I've associated with uh, Chinese administrative procedure, especially the concept of the uh, restricted list. Instead of um, all foreign investments having to be approved, it means that only those on the list uh, need to go through some extra procedures that are not made subject uh, to Chinese domestic investors. So it represents the ultimate in national treatment for foreigners. It, al it also represents um, the um, letting go by government of their um, uh, participation in the process of setting up enterprises except for simple registrations. I never thought I'd see that within my lifetime, but it's happening in Shanghai. This free trade zone represents a significant next step in taking uh, the Chinese economy to a higher technical and um, uh, intellectual level. Over 30 years ago, the Chinese government supported the creation of special economic zones. The idea was to use this as a method of introducing a market economy into the country, which would then kick-start the nation's rapid growth. Such reforms soon spread across the entire nation, turning China into the workshop of the world and forever altering global manufacturing. Now China's new leadership is experimenting with this policy once again. 
If successful, it could lead to such reforms across the country and once again upgrade China's economic model. Nikki Aaron, CNC World, Shanghai. This is CNC World, a new perspective.